And uh, it's got all the military conflicts, which I'm going to show you some too. But this is all the military conflicts. If you want to uh, uh, get see these, come on up here and end the service. And if you want a copy of this, we can make you copies of, of this. And there's some stuff here of, of, of uh, uh, veterans, the veterans administrations, veterans affairs. But we've had a lot of people over the years give a whole lot uh, for the sake of our freedom. And I thank God for that. I have people tell me all the time, well, why do I want to vote? Because there's nothing to choose. Well, I tell you what I don't want to do. Here's, what, here's how you do this. If you don't know who to vote for, vote anyway and think about what you don't want. And if you don't want something, then you need to go with the other team. That's all. Go with the team. Don't go with this certain person. Go with the team. And again, that's totally up to you because too many people die for somebody to tell me how to vote. I had, I had somebody call me, in their, call me in their office one time and I said, what is it? They said, I got a problem. I said, what's your problem? He said, my boss was telling me how we, have, we are to vote. And I said, you tell your boss that too many people died for you to have that right. And, and there's too many people that have got your back. So you don't tell anybody how they are to vote. Okay, just do it. And so watch if you are, but to not vote, remember this, to not vote means you're voting for the person that won, whoever it is. To not vote. And if you don't vote, you know, I, I got some people in my family have complained about every president that's ever been. They complain about every senator and every congressman. And I say, well, if you don't like it, change the way you vote. And they go, oh, I didn't vote. I've never voted. And I say, well, then don't say anything. Amen. So here we go. Okay, here we go. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Okay, we're talking about Memorial Day, and so I'm just going to give you a, few, a little brief little overview of some things. And I got, do you remember your story? I, I do like Ron Parrish. It's, it's a that, true story, but sometimes I have to make it do it. That's right. Ron Parrish says that, Ron Parrish, he used to be a principal for 37 years. Ron Parrish, he's so awesome. He says, this is a true story. He says, he says some, of them, some of them only have to make it up. So this one here. Okay. Uh, Sacrifice. This is just some of the statistics. There's some stuff down there about the wars. This is just a few of the wars. These are the people that, that died during these wars. During the Civil War, 625,000 men died. Wow. World War I, 116,516. World War II, 405,399. And... Uh, the total soldiers that were killed in this war was 3, 35 million soldiers were killed in World War II. Wow. Uh, Korea. There was uh, 35,516. Vietnam, of course, 58,209. And the total death from all sides of, of the Vietnam War was actually, watch this, Three hundred or three million four hundred and thirty-five thousand. The smallest war, of course, is Desert Storm. As far as loss, there was only two hundred ninety-three lost in Desert Storm. They said there's more people lost in training exercises than there was in Desert Storm. Afghanistan. This is actually incorrect. There's a whole lot more to it than this. Uh, probably it's probably doubled this, but it's two thousand one hundred and forty-five. And you got to remember now, these wars are different than. When you count casualties, because when they count casualties now, they only count military casualties. They don't count contractor casualties. So, so uh, usually, if you see, I'm mean just for instance, if you see a hundred soldiers have been killed in a conflict now overseas, if they see a hundred soldiers have been killed in conflict, you can pretty much rely on 100 to 200 contractors have died. On now, check check. Okay, check check, check check. Can you hear it? Is it in there now? She might need a battery. Eddie, can you come get her a battery, please? We got the pit crew coming, sister. Pit crew's on the way. We got the pit crew coming. So, if you see a hundred, a hundred soldiers are killed, think about this, anywhere from a hundred to two hundred contractors have been killed also. Okay, so that's heavy, heavy duty stuff. 
And then in Iraq, uh, 45, got it? Is it working now? Is it working now? Okay. I'll lay hands on it. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got a car out there. I can use your hands after service. Okay. Uh, so, so again, I, uh, uh, right at 45, 100 <coughs> soldiers lost their lives. And, of course, the sacrifice of one's life and one's country is, is truly just an awesome act. But I want you to see something. I want you to look at this. Uh, our Marines remind us, all gave some, but some gave all. All gave some, but some gave all. Today we honor this great example of faith uh, that they did, and we need to follow their example. Amen. That, that's right now. First, let's give let's give give these guys and women and all the people. There's nothing we can do actually to make up for what they've given for us. But for right now, I just want us just to, to give them a hand clap for what for, for this. That would be awesome. 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 Now the story is so dear to my heart and I can't remember it, so I'm gonna get the other guy that can't remember it. Let him do it. Go ahead, brothers. They can hear you. Just stand on up and talk. They can hear me, uh, Yeah, they can hear you. As we said, this is a, a true story. Uh, looking around this room, there are probably at least one person in here, maybe two, at least two, who could remember when this happened. But you know, they wouldn't have been able to see it on TV back then because this happened in 1943. You know, I was telling you when I told this story at the Abbas Walk, uh, we had a television when I was a little boy. And, you know, and this was in the 50s. And this television had remote control it was voice operated. I mean, it, it, this was in 1953, 54. It was voice operated. My daddy would say, get up and change the channel. <laughs> get up and go change the channel. That has nothing to do with the story I'm about to share. The story I'm about to share, uh, there was a TV show that used to be called You Were There. This just back us up until the 3rd of February, 1943. You Were There. You know, the United States was fully engulfed in World War II. We had troops on all of the battle fronts. There was a ship, the USS Dorchester, which had been built in Newport News, Virginia. It was a uh, ship that was uh, designed to be a, a passenger liner sailing up and down the east coast of the United States, carrying people on, you know, cruises back even then. Uh, it was designed for 300 passengers and a crew of about 60 or 70. On this particular day, it had been the government had taken over this ship, and there were nine, 904 people on board. It was sailing from New York to Iceland to meet up with another group of soldiers who would be on a special mission, which they hadn't even been told where it was going to be. But in the middle of the North Atlantic, at about 12. 45 in the morning, this ship was torpedoed by a German U-boat. Two torpedoes hit directly into this ship and rendered her totally useless. You might say uh, she had lost all steam. They couldn't even blow the six-blast whistle to abandon ship. So they were scurrying, hurrying, trying to get people up out of the, the bottom of the ship. Uh, people were running. People were scared. I wouldn't have been too. I'm sure you would have been. There were not enough life preservers. But on board this ship, there were four army chaplains. There was a Methodist minister, a minister from the uh, Dutch Reformed Church of America, there was a Jewish rabbi, and there was a Catholic priest. Well, there were three, three uh, Coast Guard cutters escorting this ship. Well, they saw what was happening, so they immediately stopped, started shooting flares. This water was so cold as the guys were trying to get in lifeboats, the ship was listing real quick. And it was falling, you know, sinking very quickly. A lot of these guys fell in the ocean, the cold water, and it just, you know, it was just devastating. But uh, one of the guys who survived this, he said the last thing he remembered seeing on the deck of that ship is, is the bow was fixing to go under for full chapters. Old chaplains who had given up their life jackets. They gave their life jackets, took them off, and gave them to a soldier, hopefully to save their life. They were standing there and they said they could hear prayers in English, they could hear prayers in Latin and in Hebrew as these chaplains prayed as this ship went under. Those four chaplains lost their life. There are monuments everywhere to these four chaplains. There's one at Newport News at the shipyard. 
But uh, the Bible says, What greater love hath a man than he give up his life for another? The Bible also says the two greatest commandments are to love your Lord your God with all your soul, your body, your mind, and your heart, and to love your neighbor as yourself. But in a few short minutes, these four chaplains, all from different denominations, but all in one accord, doing their job. They were commissioned as chaplains, but they were ordained by God to do what they were doing. They gave their lives, hopefully, to save somebody else. Kind of reminds us of another story that we back up for. Jesus was in heaven. He gave up his life jacket to come to earth that we might live. Uh, that story just kind of, you know, that, that's one of the true stories that you don't ever hear about. But when the day was over, this was the worst maritime accident, well, a war-related war accident the United States ever had during the Second World War. Now, Pearl Harbor, mind you, they lost more people, but these ships were all dry docked. They were all docked at Pearl Harbor. This ship was sailing through the Atlantic, uh, and these guys were just, you know, broadsided by an ambush attack by the Japanese. But uh, I thought it was very interesting that, you know, there were four different, four different groups of people, but they all were one accord that day. And in, in about 30 minutes from the time the torpedoes hit the side of the Dorchester, the Dorchester had sunk. Out of the 904 people on board, 675 died. That was, that was pretty, tough, pretty tough. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But I got a, I got a written article about it if y'all would like to read the story. That's awesome. Get your Bibles out. Turn to Matthew 24. Now, what's going to happen next week? You see that? What is that? That's salt with the salt with the wind band in it. <laughs> Y'all see that? I hate I hate the thought that she turned into a pillow of salt, but it is kind of a wild picture of salt with the wind band. <laughs> Amen. Remember, Lot's wife. That's going to be next week. And it's not going to be one of those legalistic messages that want to make you throw up. This is some good stuff. Next week, let's all stand. God is so good to us all. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm just going to ask. I'm going to ask. Is there anybody here, nobody looking around, is there anybody here today that would say,